If you're looking to turn a dull looking piece of IKEA furniture into something special, then upcycling is definitely the way to go. For my first time trying my hand at this, I took the IKEA Kopang chest of three drawers that we already had and turned them from this into this. Keep watching to find out exactly how you can do the same. Now we bought this chest of Kopang drawers secondhand on Gumtree for around £40. And as you can see, the previous owner had already given it a coat of paint. But to be honest, it was pretty boring. So we're going to turn this into a blue and gold beauty that's going to fit the theme of our new bedroom. Put simply, there's four stages to this process. Preparation, in which we'll get all the surfaces ready to paint. Painting, which is pretty much what it sounds like. Varnishing to seal and protect our work. And finishing touches, in which we can find some fitting replacement parts to suit the new style. And give yourself time, set aside a couple of days to get this right. Nothing worth doing ever got done in a hurry. For this, you will need some paint. We've gone for the Color Courage Iced Surprise. It's a beautiful and distinct light blue. For the gold accents, you'll need liquid leaf gold paint. Some goggles for eye protection. Frog tape for masking the gold design. White spirit or brush cleaner to clean up between coats. A tray and some brushes, of course. A light sandpaper to rough up the surface. I'm using 180 grit, which is classed as very fine, much like myself. And later, once we're fully dried, some wax finish varnish. I've gone for a brand called Polyvine, as it has what they call a dead flat finish, which is what I'm going for. I want protection, but the appearance of the original paint. You'll also need dust sheets if you're working indoors, a screwdriver or wooden batten to mix your paint, and a rag of some kind to wipe down surfaces. Stage one, preparation. To prepare our chest for painting, we just need to rough up the surface all over with our sandpaper. Once this is done, rub down all of your surfaces with a clean rag to remove all the sawdust and any other dirt so that you're ready to get colorful with the paint. Stage two, painting. To kick things off, open up the paint and be sure to mix it well before pouring it into your tray. Then it's just a case of working from top to bottom with careful brush strokes applied in the direction you would expect the wooden grain to go. For example, when painting the top, I brushed left to right, but when working on the vertical corner parts, I was brushing up and down. Just be sure not to leave too much paint in any spot and keep checking back to ensure that you haven't, as you'll see that this starts to drip and solidify later, which is not what you want. A paint like this typically needs two coats to look its best. And what may worry you during the first coat is that it can look a little patchy. Don't worry about this and resist applying too much paint in the first coat. You'll find the recoat time separate to the overall drying time listed on your tin. So with my first coat done, I took a two hour break to let it dry and then did the second coat, remembering to clean the brushes and tray so that they're ready for the second coat in between. Then with the second coat completed, I waited a final four hours before starting to work on the gold design. The gold design was something I wanted only on the drawers. So I used frog tape to cover the parts around the drawers and then place them back in. I then measured to find the center of the bottom drawer. This was crucial as I was making a triangle design and I didn't want it to seem off center. It's an OCD nightmare that I'd be looking at daily. With the center marked, I used the frog tape held taut to get my straight edges masked out. I then shook up my gold leaf pot and with a small brush began to paint left to right to fill the masked areas. Now you may be wondering why I opted for this over spray paint. Well, for one, I don't need to worry about ventilation or breathing in nasty fumes, which would have meant taking these drawers outside to spray, but mainly I wanted to get this really different grain-like effect that the gold leaf offers. And it's a contrast to the matte look of the blue body of the chest I'd already painted. Once I'd completed the main parts of this, I pulled each drawer out carefully having cut above the dividing line in order to remove part of the frog tape, being careful not to cut it off. I then folded this back over the top and completed the gold brushwork on the top edge of the drawer so that you see the gold look continue when you open each drawer. It's these little touches that I think really sell a piece of upcycled furniture to feel like a distinct product as opposed to a simple repaint. With the painting complete, I left the chest overnight to give it plenty of time to dry before varnishing. Stage number three, varnishing. This final stage was pretty simple. Just a case of opening the varnish, giving it a stir. They warn you against shaking it, so watch out for that. And then pouring it out and applying the same brush direction as your paint. This kind of varnish has a smooth glue-like consistency and it requires two coats. 
So on first application it can appear white and streaky but just like wood glue it's the kind of thing that dries clear. So just be sure to apply it as evenly as possible and you'll be fine. Different to the paint, the varnish requires 4 hours between coats. So take that break and then reapply once more, remembering to clean your brushes and tray in between so that they're ready for the next coat. With the final varnish applied, I gave it another 4 hours and then tidied everything up. Stage 4 was my finishing touches. Now, as this is a very different chest of drawers, I didn't want to use the original knobs, so I went on the hunt through the local DIY stores and then to eBay, where I settled on this gorgeous swirl effect frosted glass knobs with a gold base. I think it gives the modern art deco feel that extra pop. I screwed these in and then took a step back to admire my handiwork. And that's pretty much it. Now it's just a case of filling it with clothes and decorating the top with whatever you like that complements the colors. I hope you enjoyed this how-to video. I definitely had fun putting it together and I'll definitely be doing more. In fact, I already did. To complement this, our bedroom needed a dressing table. So we took the IKEA Alex desk and used the same blue and gold to transform it from a white ball fest into something really special. I hope this video helps you transform your furniture into something unique and special. The world's far too dull not to. Enjoy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.